What's up guys? So yes, I will be doing a review slash talk slash discussion on Naruto. And so if you guys have been keeping up with my announcement videos, you know that with schooling, I have sometimes for the last few weeks, at the very least, been forced to give up on doing a review of that week because of lack of time. So I now have a little bit of time. So be thankful that you are now getting a review. So this is in fact going to be a review on the latest chapter that was just released and the last few chapters that I missed out on on the previous weeks. So let's just get into it. Um, by now you should know that I usually throw out spoiler alert warnings. Um, I'm going to stop doing that. Uh, just you should know already that I'm, be, I'm going to be talking about some spoiler related stuff. So quite honestly these chapters were more of a build-up chapter and we see a lot of people all these prominent figures in Naruto history all coming together and fighting and I really think it's a really cool thing um, but it sort of bugs me I feel like there's still really strong figures who aren't there and I can't put any names on it I feel like almost all the strongest characters in Naruto have sort of been revived in some way shape or form or shown up in this great war and if by now you haven't realized that this is probably going to be the final big fight you can't like the author has made it pretty clear that he is trying to put in every little last bit from everything into this last fight uh, so it should be pretty darn clear the series is coming to an end which is sad. but um, I hope all you people who have been whining that the series has been going on too long are happy now which I hate because I really could have read another 300 chapters of Naruto I could have read Naruto for the next five to ten years but um, you know I know this one friend who was super annoying and said, you know, he he was literally annoyed at the series and yet he watched it anyways. He read the series and he would always just complain about it and say, oh, I wish it would end soon. Well, I hope you're happy. But it's very clear, you know, with Orochimaru and the uh, five Kage alliance and then the old Kage is being revived and then um, back in the day of... Uh, uh, back at the start of this arc where all the like dead people were re revived with the Ido Tensei it was fairly clear how it was going down but, and again this is sort of back in the day but one thing which was very confusing was it seemed like anyone with like a certain threshold of power level was able to break out of the Ido Tensei by sort of um, uh, just being able to control themselves and again there could be a lot of subjective debate about this so there's no conclusion on that but I'll, I'm very curious why some of the other people in Ido Tensei weren't uh, really shown out and I feel like certain people who have been revived or at least shown in this arc that weren't uh, not, not a lot come to mind but I guess maybe Kisame um, and uh, maybe some of the people like Haku like from the very first arc uh, But it's not a big deal like leave your comment on a few characters that you feel should have at least made an appearance in this final great Shinobi war arc now, To the to the actual chapters It's very clear, you know with all these people fighting that's coming to an end, but the question is Do you guys agree with this sort of power level difference thing because we see like literally everyone almost everyone fighting these two people that's it's literally just two people we have like thousands of people in addition to all the pretty much strongest people in naruto universe history dead or alive save for jiraiya and a few others like pain uh, who are fighting against two people I mean I feel like a lot of readers who just casually read the series 
have forgotten to bring that point across. They fail to acknowledge the fact that they're just fighting two people. And I personally don't think the power levels should be aligned that way. I don't think, no matter how strong Madara is, I feel like Madara should still be roughly around the range of Hashirama. Hashirama, when they were both, had almost always beaten Madara in a fight. So, for, I mean, I feel like Hashirama should be able to take on Madara. And so, we're pretty much saying that Obito is taking on the rest of them on his own. Is his power level really that great that he has to face, that he can face Orochimaru, the, the strength in form of the Itachi, Sakura, Naruto, plus the four Hokages, plus the five Kage Alliance, um, plus like every single Shinobi in the Naruto universe who's still alive, plus the nine tails and eight tails QB and their Jinchuriki counterparts. Uh, the QB having almost infinite chakra, all for this ten-tailed beast form, Jinchuriki. May or may not make sense. At the same time, I do feel it, it doesn't really make sense that much. At the same, time. Uh, it still makes sense because at this point, it's almost like, like if the author wanted to, this guy could pretty much become like a demigod or a god, where he can literally do anything, like. It almost looks like Obito has no limits with his sort of black orb technique. But the author, the manga creator, is doing a good job of at least balancing that by showing some sort of limits to Obito's power. I mean, if Obito really was all powerful, he would just snap his fingers or wield it, and they would have all died and it would have all gone down. So uh, we are still seeing some humanistic parts, not just from his emotions and his reactions but also through the fact that they are still trying to get this sort of thing to work and they're pretty much trying to stall so this this freaking flower can bloom and for it to take effect now i'm going to go back like a couple chapters to the whole thing with the the, the princess eating the, the plant and then gaining the powers and then this whole struggle of the the ten tails jinchuriki or the Ten Tails Biju reclaiming his lost powers. My whole question is with this whole legend, why is it so freaking obvious? No, no, not obvious. Why is it so easy for the princess to just pluck off a fruit and eat it and gain all the powers? If it was that easy to gain these powers, Tails Biju, it's his own fault for losing the powers in the first place. And the whole process seems kind of stupid. You have a Tentails Biju with almost unlimited power potential, who sort of bloom, who has like a, a, a blooming tree that has fruit which you can eat and steal his power, just sitting there in like some some place. And then as soon as the, the, your powers are stolen, you are pretty much like um, you you have no chance of reclaiming them unless of course a human comes along and aids you along your quest and that human has to be very very strong in this case it was Madara who had to pretty much reclaim all the all the freaking uh, tailed beasts and then bring them back together granted granted the uh, I forgot his name the the sage of six pass that's his name uh, who sort of stopped the ten tails bead you from doing from like reclaiming his powers but it's it's a very interesting thing and the whole universe seems to be based and this is the main point the whole universe seems to be based on a whole idea that it revolved around ten tails biju and like it was the whole universe revolved around the sage and then this this beast just roaming the land and it's very interesting and at the same time there's a lot of philosophy play in this chapter that relates a lot to our own world because at the same time the whole Naruto universe is based on a single earthly like world they could be also in the solar system which could also be in a galaxy which is also in a, a universe filled with galaxies which is very similar to our own u universe 
and begs many questions on the meaning of life, the meaning of this universe, if there's anything outside of the universe, and the whole point of all this, or if there is a point, and questions like why is there this pain that is the point. Um, so a lot of philosophical questions, a lot were brought up in the latest chapter as well, including the whole idea with freaking like Obito coming down and questioning Naruto on all his all this stuff and I quite frankly did not like Naruto's answer because it really didn't answer anything it was a very naive stupid answer he answered all these questions like why are you continuing fighting when you know it's inevitable when you know your friends may still backstab you etc etc with this whole thing with it is the ninja way and I really feel like with Naruto answering it like this he's really choosing to ignore uh, the fact that these problems will remain. Having Beetle may not you know all this. There will inevitably be continued fighting and pain and hunger and all these tragedies with the continuation of the, the world in the Naruto universe as the way it is. So I'm very curious to see how Naruto will choose to remedy, remedy this and how he chooses to sort of fulfill his role as the the chosen one to, who will save the entire world from all this um, I, I quite frankly predict but hope this won't happen but he's going to beat this guy and then they're going to form some sort of lovey-dovey sort of naive utopia where there's no fighting which I think is horribly unrealistic but that may be the case and then so the last two Sort of things that I'm sort of uneasy about was Mage showed up in Orochimaru and the rest of them Sasuke with his freaking uh, infused form of Manchu Sharingan all these people have agreed to fight Obito Madara being occupied with um, Hashirama I just still have a hard time wrapping my head around all that all these incredibly powerful beings are having such a hard time taking down Obito I mean it does make sense it is the biggest fight ever and who knows how strong Obito is but I mean Orochimaru with his snakes his power level and all these really strong, strong and really confused with a lot of panels in this chapter and in, in, in the the last few chapters where you see a lot of them just standing around talking to each other like there there were literally panels in this chapter this latest chapter with the second Hokage and then Hashirama himself and all these others just standing there like not even talking just standing there in thought sometimes not even in thought just like there's one panel with the second Hokage just staring off into the distance like how do you even have the time for that? What is Madara doing? Why doesn't Madara attack all these people when they're just standing there? So it's a very interesting thing. And at the same time, I'm very confused with Obito's sort of power cap because, like, sure, he did a lot of things that could have almost wiped out everyone. Remember that, like, four Biju Dama attack? My question is, can he because he has multiple limitations and chakra levels or is it simply because of the fact that he feels like it will just be countered the way it was again but if that was the case then couldn't he just keep doing it until they all run out of chakras because his chakra is for sure higher he has more chakra than all of them so I'm really confused why Obito just didn't just keep spamming Biju Damas or something like that regardless we will see a final fight here and I feel like a lot of them play a major part in this. I do feel, you know, Kakashi, he's going to play a major part having his Manchu Sharingan ability related to Obito. So maybe he will swap uh, dimensions with him again and maybe finish him off. Again, I think it's, a, again, another cop-out similar to Bleach where Kakashi for the millionth time almost seemed to be dead for sure. And then a few chapters later survived yet again again another cop out but at the same time part of me is happy he's alive as always 
the, the reader never wants any of the good guys to die, but I feel like it is a cop-out in certain ways. Certain people do have to die. I don't feel like it's enough. At the same time, I am happy that he's alive. And last but not least, this chapter, and definitely last chapter, had a lot of foreshadowing that pretty much said that Naruto was going to be the Hokage. Like, it was very blatant, which I didn't really like because it seems to have a lot of foreshadowing to the sort of lovey-dovey ending that I, for one, it will not end like this because you know we all want to see the Sasuke fight but it really truly seems like it will not happen. Naruto for Sasuke part 2 will not happen and it feels like, as especially as the chapters go on and I feel like the creator was possibly not predicting it to end out this way but for, because he is sort of like possibly making it up as goes, it sort of has turned away. And the Sasuke fight doesn't seem to gonna happen. It's not gonna happen, especially with the power level of Obito and the power level of Sasuke and Naruto. Now, it just seemed like a, a lower tier fight that wouldn't really enhance the ending of this series. So let me know your thoughts on that. I would like it to happen, but it just wouldn't make sense the last panel of this chapter with Sasuke sort of you know coming alongside Naruto again and saying let's finish this up so we'll see what happens and I really do feel the Naruto vs Sasuke fight won't happen with the latest chapters especially like the last few panels were like it was like a it was like a panel on Sasuke and then Obito was talking and saying your friends may turn in you in your future and then the next panel was Naruto saying uh, this is my ninja way. I'm gonna do it regardless. I don't go back on it. So that event in itself pretty much is almost saying like Sasuke is probably not going to fight Naruto um, And if he does like it's Naruto won't really regret it. So it's it's almost like discounting the whole idea that the Naruto versus if I will be anything great Let me know my favorite comment and subscribe. Peace